The words icon and legend get banded around way too easily in my opinion these days, but it's fair to say that over the last, what, 46 years or so, Name has managed to secure its legacy in the annals of hi fi -dom. It's what I'd consider to be a legendary brand. Now back in the mid 90s, when I was well and truly along my hi-fi journey, there were a few established benchmarks if you were looking at amplifiers at various price points. If you were in the market for an amplifier below 300 pounds, the Pioneer A400 was still arguably the best amplifier on the planet. It regularly used to shoot out for top honor awards with the Marantz PM40 SE and its various successors, which were just basically tweaks on the original design. Back in the late 80s, we had gone down the Marantz route. Now I say we, I really mean my father purchasing it based on my advice. Back then I was still living at home and my parents' system was the main system that we owned as a family. That changed by the mid 90s. I was living on my own and my system had surpassed theirs. I bought the Arcam Delta 290, which at five to 600 pounds could be considered the next level up. I loved it for its rich tonality, which gave you more than a taste of high-end hi-fi. The other established benchmarker around that price was the original Audiolab 8000A. It had a little bit more clarity than the Arcam, but not the tonal richness. And I found the Audiolab just to be a bit clinical for my tastes. A good friend of mine had opted for the Audiolab and he felt that he had made the right choice. I'd opted for the Arcam and I felt that I'd made the right choice as well. Now, those of you who follow this channel will know where I went from there, down the exposure route, but I don't wanna get into that today. Back in the mid nineties, if you were looking to spend more than a thousand pounds on an amplifier, there were two big brands and they were Name and Lin. Name amplifiers of the time are what are now referred to as the Olive series due to the color of their fascia. They had that name trademark, pace, rhythm and timing, often referred to as Pratt, but they also had a tendency to sound a little bright, so you had to be careful about the speakers you matched them with. Lin amplifiers at the time I felt were even brighter, but they had very loyal dealers and customers that ensured the success of the brand. In 2011, Name merged with Focal and things started to change. For starters, there's a lot more products available today. Now, if I discount the Name Muso products, not that there's anything wrong with them, but I consider those to be lifestyle products. There's friends that have bought those on my recommendation and been very happy with them. If you're looking for a one box solution with speakers integrated into the box, then they do a sterling job in their market segment. But I'm talking about proper traditional hi-fi. If you want to start your name journey today, there's two routes that you can go down. For two and a half thousand pounds, you can opt for the name Unity Atom, which has a 40 watt per channel amplifier built in, a whole host of digital and analog connectivity, as well as a built in streamer and names proprietary app, where they've paid a lot of time and attention to make sure that the user interface is up to scratch. And let's not forget that sexy rotary volume control. If streaming isn't your main source, or you're just happy to have additional boxes and have a streamer separate, there's no doubt in my mind that you have extra upgrade flexibility as well as better sound quality on offer if you go down the traditional separates route. The name Nate 5 SI amplifier and the matching CD5 SI CD player represent the entry point into name separate system. And the combination of this pair will only set you back 300 pounds more than a Unity Atom. So the question I really wanted answered was this, how good is an entry name system? The name Nate 5 SI and CD 5 SI are full rack width units housed in matching chassis measuring 432 by 301 by 70 millimeters or 17 by 11.8 by 2.75 inches. Construction is solid, adding to the pride of ownership with thicker black anodized aluminum platework than the thin folded metal sheets you typically find around this price. The name Nate 5 SI amplifier retails for £1,499 in the UK. I'm a big fan of the looks. The way the legendary name logo and buttons are illuminated, the fact there are no screws or mounting points visible, and the controls being limited to a volume dial and input selectors, all contribute to an elegant, understated, minimalist aesthetic. The matching CD5 SI CD player sells for £1,399 in the UK. 
there's a real satisfaction to operating this disc spinner from the magnetic attraction of the catch and the disc securing puck to the silky smooth rotation of the hinge transport itself. It's far more gratifying to use than the conventional slot or tray loaded mechanism and unlike a top loader, won't compete with a turntable for top shelf honors. Even the buttons for previous, next, stop and play have a reassuring spring to them when pressed. Back to the amplifier and at the rear you'll observe speaker binding posts for banana plugs only. The AV input facilitates easy integration with a home cinema receiver. HTD has an input and output to use with recording devices and tuner and CD inputs offer you a choice to connect via conventional RCA or names preferred 5 pin DIN which is reputed to have a superior type of connection. The accompanying CD5SI just has outputs for RCA and DIN. I for one am not concerned about it having integrated streaming functionality as there's plenty of cost effective streamers these days but I am going to beat the drum for it not accepting external digital inputs so you could use it as a DAC. Whether it's optical to connect to a TV or coax to upgrade the sound from your Blu-ray player it's not commonly found but I wish more CD players had them. Both units come with NAMES multifunction remote control which is plastic but of decent size and weight. Inside the NATE 5 SI amplifier you'll find a 300 VA toroidal transformer and four power supply filter caps in two different sizes. Power supply has always been a big deal with NAME and here you can see that a bit more money has been spent than the norm at this price. The motorized volume control looks like an ALPS and it's a neatly laid out circuit board. The NATE 5 SI is rated at 60 watts into 8 ohms and 90 watts into 4 ohms. Those old school Olive series of NAME products that I spoke about earlier in this video, well they were very popular with NAME customers and dealers quarter of a century ago and there's many NAME enthusiasts that still cover them to this day. But now how can I put this? Some. Some but not all of those name enthusiasts have expressed dissatisfaction with some of the newer name products. They say that the sounds changed. Well that tends to happen over a quarter of a century. Now just so that you know where I stand, I was never one of those old school name enthusiasts. I always found the sound just a little bit too bright. It was very impressive over short listening sessions but over longer periods of time I either wanted to turn the sound down if not off altogether. That said though, I think there's some common ground I can establish with those old school name enthusiasts. And that is, has the sound changed with the new products? And my answer is yes. Is the new product less bright than the old product? And the answer is yes again. But has the new product lost that legendary name sense of pace, rhythm and timing, that Pratt? And my answer would be no, it hasn't. Let's start with the Nate 5 SI amplifier which I think pretty much is star of the show. The clarity is right up there with the class leaders and the bass definition and control, well I'd say that is class defining. There isn't another amplifier that I've come across sub £2,000 that can hang on to a fast bass rhythm as well as the name. The weight is supremely well judged. Normally amplifiers that have the speed lack the authority they just basically sound anemic, but there isn't a hint of that with the 5SI. It's not overdoing the bass, it's not underdoing it. Kick drums are delivered with authority, but it's the definition, the speed and control that gives the little Nate 5SI 10 out of 10 in my book when it comes to low frequency performance. You're not going to hear much criticism from me about the mid-range performance as well, which on the whole is fairly neutral. It helps that there's no bleed through from the bass frequencies into the lower mid-range, but the transient attack, the way the leading edges of notes are delivered cleanly is very impressive on this amplifier. It's a combination of the bass weight, superb definition, lack of bleed through through the mid-range, and the clean transient attack that gives the Nate its sense of pace, rhythm and timing that the brand is renowned for. The clarity through the vocal region is very good as well as instrument separation. That means it's very easy to follow individual instruments through the mix as well as singers. There's enough body there so the amplifier doesn't sound lean, certainly isn't full and rich either. It just goes down the middle and that adds to the sense of neutrality. The upper mid range, the presence region, that's where name amplifiers have traditionally divided opinion. Those who like a little bit of added emphasis there find them exciting, those who don't find them bright and fatiguing. And here there is still 
a little bit of added extra emphasis. There is a little bit of forwardness there, but I tried them with a bunch of speakers that I'll talk about later, and with none of them did I find it fatiguing or tiresome. I was able to listen for long periods without any problem at all. The high frequencies are slightly recessed. The Nate 5 SI isn't the last word in resolving detail in the uppermost octaves. It's most noticeable when you listen to the decay of cymbals, which are short. In fact, the decays in general with this amplifier are short, whether you're listening to the upper harmonics of lead vocals or lead instruments. As I mentioned earlier in this review, this amplifier has a very good transient response at the beginning of a note, reasonable body in the middle of a note, but it is an amplifier that I'd choose if you wanted a long or even natural decay at the end of a note. That isn't my main criticism of the Nate 5 SI though. My main criticism is the sound staging. Okay, it has a relatively flat sound stage with lead instruments and vocals projected forward, but I'm not complaining about that. That's a presentation that some people enjoy. It gives a feeling of more intimacy. It has limited sound stage width, barely extending beyond the speakers left and right. And in this particular regard, the Nate 5 SI is decidedly average. In comparison, the Exposure 2510 doesn't have quite the same bass control or transient attack, but it has a fuller mid-range and a more resolving top end, giving it an airier sound. It also has a much wider and deeper sound stage. The Wilsington R8 with upgraded PS vein tubes trades quite a bit of bass definition to the name amplifier, but it makes up for it to some extent with added bass weight. It also has a lot more body in the mid-range and a little bit more extension on top. And out of all the amplifiers mentioned here today, it is the most dynamic and has the widest sound stage. Onto the CD5 SI, I'm just gonna summarize my findings here because it shares a lot of the same tonal characteristics as the name Nate 5 SI amplifier. And that is a tight, punchy bass, fairly neutral through the mid-range, just a bit of added emphasis in the upper mid-range added a bit of spice, but nothing too much, a little recessed in the top frequencies, and it has the limitations in terms of soundstage width that I described with the amplifier as well. My main criticism of the CD5 SI is that it doesn't quite have the same resolving ability as the amplifier. Partnered with the amplifier, it's fine, not too noticeable, but a CD player around 1400 pounds should be able to scale up, be partnered with more expensive amplifiers, and speakers at an appropriate level. And that's where the limitations in terms of transient attack and instrument separation become more apparent. It's not bad, it's still good, but nothing exceptional at the price. I didn't have an equivalent price CD player to compare it to, but I did have my Aurelic Aries Mini, which I've upgraded with an MCRU linear power supply. That combination sent me back around 800 pounds, but if the Aries Mini was being made today, it'd certainly be more expensive and with the combination of the linear power supply, I'm sure it'd be closer to the price of the CD5 SI. The Aurelic Aries Mini also has a very good ESS DAC inside. It's more resolving of detail than the name CD player and also has more top end extension and a wider sound stage. But there's a graininess to the mid range and it can sound a bit sibilant with brighter recordings. So it's a trade off between the two. You get Certainly more detail with the Aurelic Aries Mini, but you get more refinement with the name CD5 SI. The Primair CD15 Prisma is a little bit more expensive than the name at £1,650, but that price you also get their streaming module built inside. That CD player went back some time ago, but it did outperform my Aurelic Aries Mini with the MCRU power supply across the board. It had more detail, more refinement, a wider and deeper sound stage. So you don't have to have a Mensa IQ to work out that compared to the name CD5 SI, it is performing at a higher level. If you buy the name Nate 5 SI amplifier and the matching CD5 SI CD player, you have a choice about how you want to connect it. You can use traditional RCA as you would ordinarily with whichever cable you wish, or the five pin DIN connection that name tend to prefer. And the CD5 SI actually came with a five pin DIN cable, so I tried that out. And I compared it to my Mogami 2534, I think it is, which is a professional studio grade cable that you can buy with decent connectors for around 50, 60 pounds. And in this particular instance, I couldn't tell the difference between the five pin DIN cable and the professional studio cable. They both sounded pretty much identical. Now, I don't believe that cables sound the same. I know that blows some people's mind, 
but I'm here to report what I find, make of it what you may. The name CD5SI works really well with the Nate5SI amplifier. If by some miracle they were designed to work together, I'm jesting of course, I know that they were designed to work together, but it's clear that someone at name worked out the synergy of these two components very well, playing on the strengths and really not drawing too much attention to the weaknesses. Now I know I said that the CD5SI has not quite the resolution ability of the amplifier, but that really becomes apparent with more expensive amplification. For example, if you switch into something like the Hegel H190, which is a higher price point. In the context of being paired with the Nate 5 SI, those limitations aren't that apparent, and the amplifier is free enough from coloration to pair well with a wide variety of speakers. It also has very good driving capability, even managed to drive my old Proax reasonably well. And those old speakers have managed to trip up many an amplifier in this price category. My favorite combination with the Nate 5 SI was the Amphion Argon 1s, clean, dynamic, and with all the pace, rhythm, and timing you could dream of at this price. Switching to the Dali Minuet SCs and a near field setup, and the extra information that the Dalis have to offer in the mid range was delivered in an accomplished manner. I didn't expect it to work at all with the JBL 4309s and their horn loaded tweeter, a slightly forward speaker with a slightly forward amplifier, but I was wrong. The feeling of intimacy and being there was enhanced with very little of the drawbacks. I even had a listen to the Neat Petite Classics that have just been launched and are in for review. Neat and Name are a pairing that have traditionally gone well together, and even though that speaker is still running in, the clarity was clearly on show. The Name Nate 5 SI amplifier and the matching CD5 SI CD player make for a very compelling system at just under £3,000. The sound quality is highly competitive and so is the build quality, but it's the attention to detail that make these devices a joy to interact with, and no doubt those who own them will take real pride of ownership. These two work really well together, and I think most people will look to buy them as a pairing as opposed to mix and match them into different systems. That tends to be names philosophy anyway, but I still have to individually evaluate them. So let's start with the amplifier. It has class-defining bass performance, and in the mid-range, it's right up there with the market leaders in terms of neutrality as well as resolution. It falls back in terms of its information gathering abilities in the higher frequencies, and it has certain limitations when it comes to sound staging, the size of the sound stage in particular. But overall, this is a very good amplifier, and the name Nate 5 SI gets a highly recommended from this channel. As for the CD player, well, that's a little bit more tricky. It offers good performance across the board and doesn't drop the ball anywhere. And in the context of being paired with equivalently priced components, amplifiers in the one to two thousand pound category, similarly priced speakers, I don't think anyone's going to have any issue at all. But a fourteen hundred pound CD player, I feel, should have some degree of scalability, the ability to live with more expensive components, amplifiers up to around three thousand pounds, and similarly priced speakers. And that's where its limitations in terms of resolution as well as its scale, the size of the landscape it draws in front of you, become a little bit more apparent. It's still a decent sounding CD player though, so the name CD5 SI gets a recommended from this channel. I mentioned at the beginning of this video, name is what I consider to be a legendary brand. During its almost half century of history, it's made some landmark products. And I'd like for you to share in the comments section your thoughts and experiences of other legendary brands. I think it'd make for a really fun discussion. All that remains for me to say is if you like this video, you like what I'm doing with this channel and you want to see it grow, please do all that social media stuff, assuming you haven't done so already. Check me out on Patreon for consultancy services, bonus content, join the ABA club where we have periodic video calls. And for today, for now, a British audiophile, signing off.